Hey there. In this video, we're going to be looking at selectable measures. And what do I mean by a selectable measure? Well, this is a pretty cool uh, technique. What this allows you to do is it allows you to have a chart like this, where we've got um, a six-month, a three-month, and a no-month moving average, or a one-month moving average. Um, and uh, we want to be able to turn them on or off at will. So here we've got uh, the dark green is, or the dark blue is the six month. The light blue is the, the three month moving average and the gray is the, the regular values. And that's okay, but it could be a little bit busy, right? So what we want to be able to do is turn them on and off at will. So we want to say, hey, we just want to look at the six month or hey, we just want to look at the regular values or we want to look at the six month with the uh, three month moving average because that's how we want to do it. This is pretty cool. Uh, it's not immediately obvious to do in Power BI, but it's not that hard. So let me show you how one goes about doing that. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize that. So here we start off with, we've got our chart. Uh, it's got all three measures already defined. Let's go crack those open and take a look at them. So we've got, let me pull this open a little bit. We've got uh, our total sales measure, which is just you know normal total sales. We've got our three month, our six month, and our normal. Let's go ahead and look at the normal first. It's just looking at the total sales. We're gonna change it in a second. That's why I have this second measure. Um, I recommend doing it that way. Here's a three month moving average. This isn't a video on three month moving averages. Just, just suffice to say that this is a three month moving average, right? Um, and we also have the uh, six month moving average, okay? They're basically the same thing, just six months. So let's twirl that guy closed. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a, a disconnected slicer table, right? And then we're gonna add some logic to each one of these uh, measures, which checks the disconnected slicer table to see if a value is uh, in a certain column. And if it is, it'll render that measure, and if it will not, if it's not, it will not render the measure. It's gonna give us the behavior that we want. So let's go ahead and create that disconnected slicer. We're gonna go to home. We're gonna go to enter data. If you're really cool, you could do this in a DAX query, but I'm gonna be kind of lazy and do it this way. Oh, let me Swing this down a little bit, just so you can see it. And I'm gonna call this uh, measure, whatever you wanna call it. And, oop, not Mizzou, measure. So this is going to be normal. Then we have three MMA and six MMA, okay? And I'm gonna name this thing, I'm gonna prefix it with an X, so it's, a, it's exogenous to the model. What does that mean? Uh, it doesn't matter, it just means it's gonna come later on in the list of tables, because X comes after most of the other letters. So I'm gonna call this average type, and I'm gonna go ahead and just hit load. I'm not gonna to need to edit this thing any further. Boom, so I've got this table called average type. Let's go look at it. It's pretty simple, right? Just, just the three values we've got there, right? And so now what we're gonna do, is we're going to uh, one by one amend our existing measures to include that uh, that logic to see if a value is in here, right? So how do we do that? Well, let's start let's start with our normal table, right? This is the easiest one because it's so darn simple to look at. I'm gonna shift enter to add a space. I'm gonna do if if shift enter. All right. So uh, what we're gonna check to see is shift enter again. We're gonna check to see if contains contains X average type, now I'm going to explain this in a second, measure is normal. Now what does all of that mean? Well, uh, it's not too tricky. All this means is that, let me finish the measure here. Da, da, da. The way this measure is going to evaluate, blank, uh, it's going to start and it's going to say, hey, go check to see if the X average type table in the measure column has the value normal in it. If it does, return true, right? So if normal is in that column, it's gonna say, oh, yep, that's the case. Go ahead and get the total sales value. If it's not, if normal isn't in there, go ahead and return blank or don't render at all, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. And let's go ahead and uh, let me show you what this guy does on this one before we add it to the other ones. So let's take measure here. I'm gonna add it twice. First, I'm gonna add it First, I'm going to add it as a uh, slicer, right? Let's increase the font size of that a little bit. Is that under items, text? Let's increase that to something we could see pretty easily. Okay, there's that. And now let's add it again. Let's add it just as a regular old table, right? Now, these are going to look really similar, but I want to drive home the idea of what we're doing when we slice, okay? Let's bring this up to, say, 18. Okay, there we go. Okay, so... Now I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this. Put this up here. And actually, no, I'm not gonna close that. Close that. 
So now, as long as normal is checked, you can see that, let's, let's uncheck everything. When everything is unchecked, this measure column in the average type table has the value normal in it, right? And if I click on normal, boom, here it is again. The measure column in the X average table has the value normal in it. But if I click on something else like this, now it no longer has the value normal in it. And notice the measure stops rendering, right? That's because, if we twirl this guy open, the first thing this measure does is check to see if normal is in that column. And since it's not in that column when we uncheck it, it doesn't bother rendering it, right? It goes ahead and returns a blank, okay? So it's actually, it's pretty simple. And if we want to, like, let's, uh, I'm going to control click, add normal back into it. So now the column has normal again. So if we look at, uh, and the, the lines are back. So if we look back here, it says, hey, is normal in the measure column of average type? Yes, yes it is. It's right there. Okay, go ahead and render that value. So now all we have to do is take that same exact logic and apply it to the other measures. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do it manually just because I know when I watch other people, sometimes it's a heck of a lot easier to watch somebody type than it is to just see them copy-paste stuff. Okay, so this is a little more complicated, but it's not too bad. Again, uh, right now, this is the three-month moving average. It checks to see, hey, do we have at least three months' worth of data? If so, uh, go ahead and get your three-month moving average. If not, return blank. Oh, good. That means we're mostly done. All we have to do is add an additional little bit of logic to this first, first part of the if statement. So we're going to click here. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And I'm going to head over here, hit Shift-Enter. We're going to say and, so we have to have at least three months. We have to at least be on month three to get a three-month moving average. And also, we want to make sure that the X average type table in the measure column has the value 3 MMA in it. If it does, let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. There we go. If it does, go ahead and get the three-month moving average. If it doesn't, that means it must not be selected, so go ahead and return blank, right? So I go ahead, hit enter, twirl this guy closed, and let's do the other one while we're at it. So let's head to sales, go to the six month moving average, twirl this guy closed. Okay, same trick, okay. So now we're checking to see if we're at least on month six. We're gonna add to that logic. We're gonna hit backspace because we need to add something to it. It's not the end of that argument yet. Hit shift enter. Two ampersands for and, shift enter again. And now we're going to use the contains function. Contains function. Which table are we going to look at? We're going to look at the x average type table. Hit tab. We're going to look, uh, which column? We're going to look at the x average type measure column. Again, hit tab. That's the one we want. And what value are we going to look for? Well, before we looked for normal and three month. And this one, we're going to look for six month moving average. Close out the text string. Close out the function. Close out the argument, and you are good. Hit enter, and now you have this nice set of, oops, let's get this out of the way. Let's see if we can move this. Come on. Oh, there we go. So now we have this nice set of responsive slicers. So you could select three month and just get three month. You could select six month and get both of them if you control click, and you can get all of them if you want to, or you could just select the ones that you want. Very, very cool. There's a lot of different ways to use this, and I hope you see that it's not really all that difficult. Okay, well, I really do hope that was helpful, and I will see you next video.